Welcome to the Fearfully and Wonderfully Me podcast, a podcast designed to help you increase your influence, develop your leadership, and maximize your results. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me today for today's podcast episode on decisions that change life. And when I think about this podcast episode, uh, obviously the decisions that majorly change life, um, and certainly other people have said it, are decisions of, of the type like who we get married to, right? There's no doubt that that type of decision changes life. Um, decision to have children, right? That that obviously changes your life. If you're a person of faith, the decision to follow Jesus changes your life. I'm, I'm not really drilling down into those type of decisions because I think it's pretty much understood universally that, that those type of decisions at that level absolutely change the course and trajectory of your life. But what I'm talking about today on today's podcast episode is Decisions that change the, the, not just the course or trajectory of life, although they certainly impact that, but decisions that change the quality of life, that decisions that improve the quality of life, because I don't think we talk about that a lot. We talk about decisions that impact life and the, the trajectory of life, such as career course or who we marry or decision to become a parent, but but let's talk about the decisions that change and improve the quality of life, because I think that's where we don't necessarily think about these important decisions that absolutely can can help us have a better life. Those are the decisions that I want to make. So when I look back, there are three that stand out to me, decisions that really helped improve quality of life, uh, made life better on so many levels, made life more enjoyable, brought me more in alignment and more in harmony with the life that I wanted to create for myself. So first and foremost, I have to say that none of these decisions are easy ones to make. That's absolutely just going to throw that out there right away that these this type of decision or this decision moments, defining moments, if you will, and which course you choose, that's not an easy thing to do because it's simply part of life that the easy choice is usually not the one that moves us forward. It's the, the more difficult choice, the one that doesn't sound as fun or doesn't sound as easy or is going to cost us more in terms of sacrifice. That's usually the decision and choice that moves us farther in life toward where we want to go. But it's just part of life that, that we feel the pain of that decision a little bit more. So Let's just drill down into them. Number one, first decision that I can absolutely look back over the course of my, both personally and professionally, the decision that really changed the quality of my life was deciding to be intentional about my growth, both personally and professionally. And we have to have both, right? We have to be growing in our competencies and our skills, but we also have to be growing and developing in our character who we are as a person, as well as how we do what we do, not just what we do, right? Competency is, you know, a skill set. Deciding to go get some college education or a a degree or a certification or something, that can help you grow in competency, but there are many ways to grow your skills and competency. That's not the only way, but that's just one way. But we also have to be intentional about growing and developing who we are as a person and how we do what we do. And this, the first decision, deciding to grow my competency, I I think that that really, that decision hit me pretty much like a ton of bricks. I remember um, very early on, you know, my first job working as a waitress at Pizza Hut. And for those of you that are listening that don't know, back then, If you were serving table, or maybe still now, but back then, if you were serving tables, they 
uh, would pay you a certain dollar amount, but then they would assume that you would get X amount of dollars in tips to make up minimum wage. Well, at the time, minimum wage was $5.15. So as a server, I got paid $2.13 plus some tips. $2.13 an hour. And at the time, I wasn't interested in going to college. I had no interest in, in going to get a college degree. I just wanted to find a job that I liked and, and work. And, I, and, and let me just tell you, even though you get some tips, at the end of the week, they deduct your tips back out of your paycheck for tax purposes. So even if you work 40 hours a week, and you get that minimum dollar amount of $2.13 an hour. Even if you worked all week, 40 hours, eight hours a day, five days a week, that's not a big paycheck. And then you deduct the amount of tips that you reported out of that paycheck because you'd already, you've already received that money, right, for tax purposes. So, yeah. That first paycheck, I still have it somewhere. Um, every time we've moved, I've packed it up in a box, and every now and then I've I've come across it. And and that first paycheck was it. It just I remember opening it up, and you know I really hadn't done the math, or I shouldn't have been surprised. I mean, it wasn't like I didn't know how much money I was making, but I remember getting that first paycheck and thinking, you know what? Number one, I already knew this is not what I want to do the rest of my life. But number two. I'm going to have to do something different if I want to make more money. So deciding to grow competency and professionally, that hit me really early on. And yeah, pretty quick. I mean, it doesn't take much at $2.13 an hour to decide if you want more money, you're going to have to chase some education and some competencies and some skills so that you are more valuable, more employable, and you are able to make more income. So that hit me pretty on. I was um, had either just turned 20 or was about to just turn 20. And yeah, tough, tough eye-opening moment. Kind of like a ton of bricks just hits you over the head and says, here, if you want life to be different, do something different. So I grabbed onto that one pretty quickly. But realizing that I needed to, to grow and, and develop who I was as a person, that I don't think that I intentionally thought about that until about 2007. And I remember a conversation with, um, she had been a peer, we had been co-workers, but I had been promoted to the team leader office manager um, in the office. And so now, you know, at least on paper, I now, she now reported to me. But this lady, I will never forget her. She was older than me, much more experienced and, um, and you know, really had grown and developed herself. And, and probably she should have been the office manager. But, but I remember one day we, we were just sitting down, getting ready to open the office, you know, both working, but, but chatting as we did whatever it was we were doing. And she made just a, a comment that, that really brought to my attention how I did my job was affecting my influence with her and the the people around me. And I was, I had the competency. I, I, I had that. I was good at that. Uh, Managing things comes very naturally to me and managing an office and, and the work that, that I grabbed on really quickly, but it really, really brought to light that who I was as a person was determining my influence as a leader and how I interacted with people, how I interacted with my team, the people around me. And that conversation really just, you know, it's one of those moments when it's a growth opportunity and those aren't fun because you have an aha moment that says, Ooh, I don't like that about myself. I need to fix that. But it's that realization, that moment of, Ooh, I don't like, I don't like how this shows who I am and my character. And so now I have to do something about it, right? It's taking a good, hard look in the mirror and saying, you know what, the person responsible for my lack of influence is me. And But I didn't know, how, I wouldn't have been able to articulate it back then. I wouldn't have been able to put it in so many words. And I didn't really know how to go about changing 
my character. I didn't know how to how to grow and develop that. And it took um, probably another year or two before I realized the best way that that I could do that was reading personal growth and leadership books. And I, I certainly had some um, opportunities to do that in the next couple of years. And that did help me grow um, slow because I wasn't extremely intentional about it back in 2000 and, and two, 2007, 2008. I was still focused more on growing and um, competencies and skills, still going to college, still trying to get another college degree. I would read some personal growth and leadership books, but I wasn't yet super intentional about it on a daily basis. But when I became intentional about it on a regular, consistent basis, that leveraged how my competency affected me. So as I developed more of the character and who I was as a person, that leveraged and multiplied what I knew how to do. Leaps and bounds. I can see that just if I were to chart it in an Excel spreadsheet, I could absolutely correlate that in terms of increasing my influence, increasing my options, increasing opportunities, increasing in how much money I made um, throughout my career. So that's the first and, and probably the biggest decision that just improved quality of life is deciding to grow and be intentional about character and competency. And there again, much more return on your investment when you grow and develop your character. And I touched on this, but the best way for me is reading. I've, I love podcasts. Um, those are, are certainly a great asset and a great way to grow. But I think there's something really helpful about getting a book out and you know, taking your time and thinking about what you're reading, make some notes, make some reflections, capture your thoughts about what you're reading, because those are the most important. And to me, it's more difficult to do that in a podcast unless you're hitting pause every five seconds. So there again, podcasts, videos, those are all great. Audios are great. Uh, figure out what works for you. For me, I just really benefit more from an actual book. Number two, defining my values and priorities. This incredibly increased the quality of my life because until I did this, it, it never really occurred to me that I should direct my time and energy toward what was most important to me. I would, I would you know, just direct my time and energy at random or someone would say, hey, would you want to do this? Do you want to do this? Would you like to try, you know, would you want to try this job or would you like to take on this responsibility? And, you know, those are great to have those opportunities, but reflecting on what's most important to me and my values and my priorities and how I want to spend my time and energy and life. And when I defined that, then it was much easier to let the other things fall away. And, you know, one example of that is at some point recognizing that I, even as much as I love teaching group fitness, it, it's not the best priority and use of my time. And it was hard to let go. It's one of those sacrifices you're like, but I enjoy this, but I've, I can absolutely see how it's improved quality of my life today by defining that those values, priorities, and recognizing what, what doesn't fit. And then number three, decide to say no to everything that doesn't fit. Um, so those last two, I think, almost have to go together. But you first have to define your values and priorities and recognize what is most important. You know, if you want to, to chase the career and increase income and, you know, look at getting to the top of an organization or whatever that looks like for you, is that more important than spending time with your kids, your spouse, your family? Is it more important than, you know, having fun time on Saturday to go to the lake? Because what we're doing when we define our values and priorities is we're defining what we're going to sacrifice for and what we're willing to sacrifice to get it. So for me, my health is very important. And that has a big place in my daily activity is taking care of my health, making sure I spend time to, to cook the right food and plan for the right foods that are healthy. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but a significant chunk of my time goes to exercising, to, you know, taking care of my heart and exercising 
um, getting out of breath and going to run or going to a spin class or taking time to slow down and stretch and, and recovery and sleeping, right? At some point I decided that, that I hadn't done a great job of getting enough sleep, but I, when I defined those values and priorities for myself, I said, you know what? Part, sleep is an incredible part of my health and I'm not doing a great job of that and I need to do better. And so now I don't hit eight hours every night, but I average eight hours because I've figured out that that is important for my health and and well-being and I'm just a nicer, happier person, right? But I didn't recognize that until I sat down and de decided that for myself that, hey, this is important to me and I've got to protect it. And of course, number three, deciding to say no. Sometimes that means saying no to the things that infringe on those priorities. And only you can decide that. But you should decide that. You and only you can decide that. And you can only, you are the only one who can do that for yourself. But let me tell you, quality of life goes way up exponentially. Because first you've decided, or I've decided to grow. And so that that's equipping me with skills and tools, knowledge, how to handle certain situations, how to interact with people and change, improve relationships. That is allowed me to eliminate so much stress out of my life because I recognize the tool that I need in the situation. So being intentional with that growth and then defining what fits and what doesn't based on your personal priorities and then saying no to the things that fall outside of that. Now, it doesn't mean you have to say no to everything that's, that falls outside that. It just is highlighting the importance of being intentional. And, you know, it's something I still maybe haven't mastered, but uh, every day I, I reflect on, did I, did I use my time the way I wanted today? Was this the best investment of my time and, and my priorities? And sometimes that means shifting uh, my plan for the day or my to-do list for the day and, and shifting that around and saying, you know what, this is a priority based on my values. I need to shift that around. And that might mean that the to-do list doesn't always get done. And that's okay. If something with a, a bigger place in my heart and my values comes along, then it should shift. And I should be willing to be flexible enough to shift with it, keeping that focus and light of my priorities. So recognizing when to say no and what to say no to. And I will tell you, these three decisions will absolutely help you improve your life. You just have to sit down and decide what that looks like for you and then be intentional about doing it. Until next time. Start increasing your influence and maximizing your potential with Rhea's audiobooks. Available at audible.com, amazon.com, and iBooks. Please visit RiaStory.com to learn about Ria's books, resources, speaking, and training programs. Thanks for listening.